Hello again, I'm Patrick, and welcome to my third YouTube video, highlighting the less traveled but beautiful European cities to visit. Over tourism has made it ever more difficult to find interesting places to visit that aren't overcrowded. In my previous two videos, I suggested 20 fascinating cities, and today I'm taking you to another nine less traveled but just as interesting European cities. Before we begin our journey, I need a favor. Please like and subscribe to my channel. I'm working hard to be monetized and I can only do so with your support. Thank you guys. Our first stop today is the captivating city of Bergamo in Northern Italy. It's about an hour's drive east of Milan and hosts Milan's third airport. Most people flying into Bergamo travel straight on into Milan and they don't realize what they're missing. Bergamo is a wonderful city to visit. It's beautiful, it's unchaotic, it has a rich history and it's easy to explore. The city is divided into two distinct parts, the medieval upper city on the hill called Citta Alta and the mainly 19th century lower city or Citta Bassa, which are connected by a funicular. The upper city is enclosed by the Venetian walls, a UNESCO World Heritage Site reflecting the city's rich history. If the weather is fine, you can walk all around the walls for stunning views of the surrounding city and countryside. The upper city is an enchanting medieval town whose main square is called Piazza Vecchia, a picturesque square filled with historical buildings, cafes and restaurants. A short walk from Piazza Vecchia will lead you to the symbol of Bergamo, the stunning Torre Civica bell tower, where you can climb to the top for a mesmerizing view of the city. Be sure to wander around the labyrinthine old city and discover quaint little squares, beautiful old villas and several leaning towers. Lower Bergamo is also worth exploring. Not only does it offer a different vibe with wider roads and grand 19th century buildings, you can also indulge in some serious retail therapy at the Oreo Center shopping mall, located right next door to the airport. Both Upper and Lower Bergamo offer a wide choice of restaurants with delicious Italian cuisine. Try the delicious Bergamo-style pasta dish called Casancelli or polenta with a choice of sauces. The Bergamo cityscape is dominated by the San Vigilio Hill, topped by the ruins of an ancient castle. Take the funicular from the upper city up to San Vigilio for stunning views as far as the snow-capped Alps, adding to your memorable stay in Bergamo. Second city on our list today is the enchanting city of Lyon in France. Lyon is northwest of the French Alps and southeast of Paris and lies at the confluence of two rivers, the Rhône and the Saône. This city is renowned internationally for its spectacular Place Bellecour, an expansive public square that stands as one of the largest of its kind in Europe, offering serene and breathtaking views that leave visitors in awe. Adjacent to Place Bellecour, you'll find the Old Town, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, brimming with an array of historic sites, cobbled streets and charming buildings that tell the tale of Lyon's rich past. Wandering along these ancient streets will transport you back in time, allowing you to soak in the city's remarkable history. Then visit the magnificent Cathedral of St. John the Baptist, an awe-inspiring architectural masterpiece that has stood tall since the 12th century. This cathedral's intricate Gothic facade and stunning interior, filled with ancient relics and stained glass windows, are sure to impress. Lyon is also considered a paradise for art enthusiasts. The city's street art murals are an unmissable sight, where massive walls are transformed into vibrant works of art by local and international artists adding a colourful and dynamic layer to the city's cultural landscape. And of course, you can't leave Lyon without visiting the Museum of Fine Arts, one of France's most important museums. Housed in a former Benedictine convent, this museum boasts an extensive collection of ancient and modern art, including works by Picasso, Degas and other legendary artists. It's a testament to Lyon's vibrant art scene and its deep appreciation for artistic expression. You might be surprised by my third choice for less traveled city this week. Heraklion on the island of Crete in Greece is best avoided in July and August if you want to avoid crowds. But in the other months, Heraklion has a lot to offer with a profound history that permeates every corner of its old town. The old town is a maze of winding, cobbled streets that contain a wealth of Byzantine and Venetian architecture to explore. Here you'll also find local artisan shops and cafes offering a vibrant cultural experience. The iconic Morosini Fountain on Lyons Square, in the heart of the city, is not just a sight to admire, but it tells a story of the city's past under Venetian rule. This district is also full of interesting restaurants and cafes to explore. 
Just outside Heraklion is the Palace of Knossos, a Bronze Age archaeological site that stands as a proud symbol of the ancient Minoan civilization. With its labyrinth-like design and intricate frescoes, a visit to this palace takes you on a journey back in time and offers a glimpse into the lives of the Minoan people. Finally, visit the imposing Coolis Fortress, a Venetian fortification located at the entrance of the old Heraklion Harbour. It was built in the early 16th century and is still in good condition today after its recent restoration. It provides an opportunity to explore the old defences and offers panoramic views of the old port and city. If you're an archaeology enthusiast and have a little extra time in Heraklion, consider taking a day trip to the Palace of Phaistos, another Minoan site 60 kilometres south of Heraklion with a magnificent view of the Melia Plain and the sea beyond. Each of these attractions offers a unique insight into Heraklion's history, culture and breathtaking landscapes. Number four, this week is the capital city of Northern Ireland, Belfast. In this city, you will find yourself surrounded by must-see attractions. Belfast City Hall is the civic building of Belfast City Council, located on Donegal Square in the heart of the city centre. It effectively divides the commercial and business districts of central Belfast. The hall showcases stunning neoclassical architecture and serves as a memorial to notable citizens of Ulster. Visitors can explore the hall through guided tours, appreciating its historical significance and architectural beauty. Next, immerse yourself in the bustling atmosphere of St George's Market. This weekend market, filled with vibrant stalls offering everything from fresh seafood to handcrafted jewellery, is a shopper's paradise. Savour local delicacies, enjoy live music and engage with friendly stall owners who are always ready to share their stories. A must-see is the imposing Stormont Parliament building, which stands at the top of a wide avenue on the Stormont Estate. Go inside to be awestruck by the Great Hall, historic Senate Chamber and the Assembly Chamber, or ramble around the impressive Stormont grounds. As you probably know, Belfast was the birthplace of the Titanic, and a trip to Belfast wouldn't be complete without visiting the iconic Titanic Belfast, a world-class museum that illuminates the city's maritime history and the tragic tale of the Titanic. Walk through its nine interactive galleries and experience the Titanic's journey from conception to its tragic end. For a different perspective of Belfast, take a black cab tour of the city. These guided tours allow visitors to explore the city from an intimate perspective, often providing unknown facts and stories about Belfast's rich and sometimes troubled history. Another Belfast must see is the Botanical Garden, which has been open since 1828. This is one of the most pristine parks in Belfast and is also a popular venue for pop concerts, with many famous bands having played here, including Van Morrison, Bob Dylan, and U2, to name just a few. Finally, embrace the city's natural beauty by venturing into the Cave Hill Country Park. Here you can visit Belfast Castle, which stands majestically on the slopes of the park. This geological wonder offers breathtaking views of the city and Belfast Loch, a long and wide expanse of water that connects the Irish Sea with the Atlantic. The park also offers scenic trails to enjoy, winding through wildflower meadows, dense woods and rugged hills to perfectly round off a unique and unforgettable experience in Belfast. If you have more time to spare, consider taking a day trip to the Giant's Causeway. This is a natural wonder caused by an ancient volcanic eruption and is well worth a visit. The Causeway is an area of about 40,000 interlocking basalt columns that form stepping stones leading down from the cliff and disappearing under the sea. Most of the columns are hexagonal and the tallest are about 12 meters or 39 feet high. The Giant's Causeway is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Fifth less traveled city today is Malmo in Sweden. An interesting fact about Malmo is that since the opening of the Oresund Bridge across the sea between Denmark and Sweden in 2000, Malmo has transformed from a fairly quiet provincial town into a vibrant international melting pot attracting diverse populations and fostering a rich blend of cultures and perspectives. Residents of both Malmo and Copenhagen often commute between the two cities due to various factors, such as job opportunities, cost of living, and lifestyle preferences. Malmo offers a delightful and more relaxed exploration of the old and the new. Start off at Gustav Adolf's Torg, the second largest square in Malmo located at the southern end of the Gamla Staden Old Town. It's a pretty square with a statue of the city's King Gustav Adolf at its centre. It is near the city museum and cathedral, and the main shopping street, 
Sodergarten leads off this square. Sodergarten leads through the old town and ends at Malmo's main square, Stortoget, a beautiful square with impressive buildings and an impressive fountain in the middle. While in this district, have a look at St. Peter's Cathedral standing tall in the heart of Malmo. Built in the 14th century, it's an excellent example of Gothic architecture. Its imposing edifice and fascinating history are sure to captivate any visitors. Next, head to Malmo Castle, an impressive fortress that has defended the city since the 1430s. It's a vivid showcase of Sweden's history, offering an immersive journey through the country's past. Today, the castle also houses a museum of Nordic art, as well as stuffed animals and torture instruments. For a completely different experience, the disgusting food museum is a must visit. It's a unique attraction where you can get up close and personal with some of the world's most revolting dishes, from fermented shark to maggot cheese. It's an unusual but interesting exploration into different and sometimes shocking culinary habits from around the globe. And finally, the Turning Torso Building stands as the tallest building in Scandinavia. This twisted skyscraper, designed by the Spanish architect Santiago Calatrava, is a perfect example of the city's modernity and innovative spirit. It's an absolute must-see for architecture enthusiasts. While in Malmo, the flat terrain tempts many visitors to explore the city by bicycle rental and to even explore further afield, such as along the beach. Biking allows you to cover more ground than walking and gives you a more intimate perspective than driving. Number six today is Belgrade, the capital city of Serbia, a totally underrated city that beckons you with an array of captivating attractions. At the heart of the city, Republic Square comes alive with its bustling cafes, historical monuments, and engaging street performers. The square in the Stari Grad district, which means Old Town, has some of Belgrade's most recognizable public landmarks, including the National Museum, the National Theatre, and the statue of Prince Michael. A stone's throw away from the square, you'll find Knez Mihailova Street. This is a pedestrianized shopping street that has some of the oldest and most revered landmarks of the city, which are all protected by law. Knez Mihailova Street is a kilometer long and leads to Belgrade Fortress, a fascinating amalgamation of park, history and panorama. With its encapsulating view of the confluence of Sava and Danube rivers, this fortress has witnessed centuries of turbulent history and today stands tall as a testament to the city's resilience. From the fortress, head down the Sava Promenade. Lined with loads of restaurants and bars, the promenade offers a breathtaking view of the Belgrade skyline. Here you can relish the city's culinary scene while soaking up the local culture. The promenade follows the banks of the Sava River for two kilometers to Lake Sava and Arda Chinglan Leia, with its six kilometers of man-made beaches that are very popular in the summer months. Back in the old town, don't miss Skadar Leia Street and the Kosan Chichev Venak neighborhood, a beautiful district of Belgrade's old city called Stari Grad. The buildings are some of the most valuable in Belgrade and are also protected by law. Another must-see is the St. Sava Temple, the largest Orthodox church in Serbia. It is the most recognizable landmark in Belgrade, with its dome resembling that of the Hagia Sophia, after which it was modeled. Finally, a visit to Belgrade is not complete without a visit to the Nikola Tesla Museum, honoring one of the world's greatest inventors. Here, you can interact with Tesla's original inventions, personal belongings, and explore a 3D rendered journey of his life. Belgrade is indeed an underrated destination. Coming here is much more than a city break. It's an experience steeped in history, culture and fun. Located in the heart of Europe, our seventh city this week is Linz in Austria. It's a small city that beautifully blends the old with the new, traditional with modern and nature with urban life. It is home to the stunning Hauptplatz, the town's main square, filled with architectural marvels and bustling with energy. Here you can enjoy a cup of coffee at a sidewalk cafe while soaking in the city's vibrant life. Linz Old Town has many charming corners, beautiful old townhouses and historical spots. It also has two cathedrals, the majestic old St. Ignatius Cathedral, a towering example of Baroque architecture with intricate frescoes and awe-inspiring interiors. Be sure to attend one of the cathedral's serene masses for a truly immersive experience. Linz's new cathedral is dedicated to the Immaculate Conception. It is a splendid example of neo-Gothic architecture, built in the mid-19th century. Noteworthy are the cathedral's stained glass windows. The most famous is the Linz window, which depicts the history of Linz. History buffs should visit the Schloss Museum located in the Linz Castle, 
on the edge of the city center overlooking the river. It is a treasure trove of historical artifacts, captivating exhibits, with fascinating insights into Austria's rich past. For tech enthusiasts, Linz offers the Ars Electronica Center, a digital arts museum that is a wonderland of innovation and interactive exhibits. It's a place where art and technology intersect, offering visitors a glimpse into the future of digital creativity. For a spectacular view over Linz, head to the Postlingberg, a 540 meter or 1,700 foot hill on the opposite bank of the Danube. To get there, take the Postlingbergbahn mountain tram from the city center. From the hill, you'll find a popular viewing platform with far reaching views over the city and surrounding countryside. This is also the site of the beautiful Postlingberg pilgrimage church. For those who prefer the tranquil touch of nature and breathtaking views, the Danube boat ride is a must. It provides another aspect of the city with green expanses and the serene Danube waters that will surely capture your heart. In essence, Linz has something to offer every kind of traveler and promises a city break filled with discovery and wonder. Our eighth less traveled city this week is Augsburg in Germany. Augsburg is one of Germany's oldest cities and the oldest in Bavaria. It is also the halfway point along the Romantic Road, the famous road that runs for 220 miles or 350 kilometers from Würzburg to Fussen through southern Germany. Augsburg is around 50 kilometers or 30 miles west of the Bavarian capital Munich. It is a university town with a well-preserved historical center with a myriad of attractions. The history of Augsburg is intricately tied to the Fuggers, a wealthy family of merchants and bankers who built the world's oldest social housing complex called the Fugger Eye in the 16th century. These buildings have been beautifully preserved and are still in use today. They're not to be missed. Augsburg is also the home of the German Renaissance and Rococo styles. Augsburg Town Hall on Marktplatz is an excellent example of the Renaissance style. The square is also a great place to people watch. There are at least two Augsburg churches worth seeing for their architectural beauty. The Church of St. Ulrich and Afra, rebuilt in the 16th century in the late Gothic style, and Augsburg Cathedral rebuilt in the 15th century in the Romanesque style. Both churches stand on sites of much older churches dating back to the 9th century. Next head to Maximilianstrasse with its perfectly preserved buildings and admire the Hercules Fountain built around 1600. Close to the fountain, you'll find the Schätzle Palais, Augsburg's most important and best preserved private residence and commercial building erected in the 18th century. Today, this bourgeois palace houses numerous collections of paintings and artifacts. This palace is a must-see, also due to its well-preserved Baroque halls and famous Rococo ballroom. The palace's Rococo garden is a place of beauty and tranquility right in the city center and is also open to non-visitors to the museum. An alternative is the Augsburg Botanical Garden. A stroll here will take you through a kaleidoscope of flora and fauna, offering a tranquil experience away from the bustling city. For those captivated by the magic of storytelling, the Augsburg Puppet Theatre Museum offers a unique experience. It showcases a fascinating collection of marionettes, stages and other paraphernalia, making it a must visit for both children and adults alike. Augsburg, Germany, with its rich history and diverse attractions, is indeed a feast for the senses. Our journey concludes in the UNESCO listed city of Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania. With winding cobbled streets, local markets, beautiful churches and palaces, the city is a fantastic blend of old and new and offers a brilliant choice of attractions. Vilnius Old Town is located at the point where two of Lithuania's main rivers converge. It is famous for being one of Europe's best preserved medieval towns that showcases architecture from the Gothic, Renaissance and neoclassical periods. The main square is surrounded by cobbled streets that are dotted with bars and restaurants. Also see the Gate of Dawn, a beautiful historic city gate with a shrine to the Virgin Mary. The star attraction of Vilnius is the majestic Vilnius Cathedral and its accompanying 13th century bell tower. This iconic cathedral has been a symbol of the city for centuries embodying its spiritual and architectural grandeur. Just a stone's throw away is the Palace of the Grand Dukes, an impressive monument that encapsulates Lithuania's rich history. As you wander through the opulent halls, you'll gain an insight into the lives of Lithuania's former rulers. Overlooking the palace is the Gediminas Castle Tower, which can be reached on foot or by funicular. The observation deck on top of the tower offer a spectacular view of the town and palace. 
A trip to Vilnius wouldn't be complete without a trek up the hill of three crosses. Offering sweeping panoramas of the city, this hilltop viewpoint is a visual treat. And for the adventurous among you, a short journey to the TV tower just outside town is well worth it. While offering spectacular and far-reaching views, it also offers a thrilling edge walk, that is walking on the outside edge of the tower's viewing platform while safely strapped in by harnesses. Vilnius, like the other eight European cities we've highlighted, offers a captivating mix of historical landmarks, vibrant culture, and out-of-the-ordinary experiences. Each city is just waiting to be discovered and savoured. So pack your bags and gear up to uncover these hidden European gems. Have you been to any of these cities? Or do you have your own favourite less travelled cities? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and see you in my next less travelled European cities video.